Good morning, Australia. Uh, good afternoon, West Coast America, and good evening, East Coast America, for this uh, webinar. Today, we're going to take a bit of a deeper dive into what Microsoft Teams offers for you and your remote workforce, uh, beyond just the facilitation of, of meetings and calls. Uh, Microsoft Teams usage is exploding across the globe right now. Many companies are like ours are using it not only um, out of the box, but also finding other ways to integrate it and even augment its capabilities, which is what we're going to sort of touch on today. So, get this slideshow moving. There we are. Look at these two handsome fellows. As usual, you have me, Chris Likanenko, host of uh, the Intelligent Workplace podcast. And joining me is a previous guest of the show. In fact, he was actually my first guest on the show, digital, digital strategist from the Digital Workplace Company, James Dello. Welcome aboard, mate. Thank you, Chris. Great to be here with you again. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and the microphone works beautifully. First time, no technical hitches here between us two. That's great. You've got your Yeti Blue plugged in as well, have you? Mate, if that's one thing I learned from that first podcast was a quick, good quality equipment is is very important. So yeah, that was that was a great lesson from working excellent, with you. Excellent, excellent, fantastic, mate, fantastic. All right. So if you're a returning participant uh, for these sessions, I probably don't need to go through this slide here. Uh, but if not, this is uh, this is us. This is Lifetiles, a global company specialising in employee collaboration and communication software services and AI for the workplace. And we're in many global locations. But as I've mentioned every single time right now, we are all working from home. So uh, welcome to my home office. I've, uh, I've tidied it up for you last night. So it looks a little bit nicer than what it has been in the past. So I hope, hope you appreciate my efforts. Let's have a chat about the agenda for today. So what are we going to cover? Now, don't forget. Um, these are conversations each week when we have these these sessions. So if you want to get involved, it's really easy. Just ask a question uh, via the app, and I'm more than happy to uh, pose that to James when we get a sec. Or you can hold your questions to the end if you like. But uh, you'll notice that James and I will sort of uh, chat back and forth during this session. So it's not going to be death by PowerPoint. We don't want to be doing that in these sessions. We want to make them a little bit little bit different in that way. So, and of course, if you want to continue conversations offline at the end of this. Uh, more than happy for you to email us and you'll see our email addresses at the end of the presentation. So today we're going to have a bit of a look at uh, effective distributed teams, which is something James is really passionate about. We're going to talk about why Microsoft Teams is so effective at uh, assisting in, in uh, with uh, effective distributed teams. We'll talk about some tech hygiene factors, things you need to get right, your, your housekeeping, if you like, before you sort of run with uh, Microsoft Teams throughout your company. Uh, we'll have a bit of a look at what else Microsoft Teams does. And then uh, we'll share some of James, James's favourite insights from the uh, the recent SWIP report, which we'll talk about. And then uh, a question from me to James, being that I'm working for uh, what is effectively an intranet-based uh, company initially. Uh, what happens to the intranet if everybody's switching over to Microsoft Teams? So we'll look into that. And then we'll give you some resources, tools and solutions to go away with a little bit of a party grab bag, if you like. So thankfully, I have James with me today because uh, effective distributed teams is a bit of a passion of his. He's blogged about it a few times over his blog. You can check it out, chieftech.com.au. Uh, the link down in the bottom left-hand corner here is uh, is to a, a, a piece of uh, a, a printout that uh, James has produced that he's going to talk about during the session. So I'll throw it over to James. Now, James, look, we have this idea that technology solves everything as soon as we flick the switch to distribute our people out to, to multiple offices or even to home offices. But that is not always the case, is it, mate? I, I know you're very passionate about this subject. What tips have you got for people about to either flick the switch or about to flick the switch and go to a distributed team model? Yeah, yeah. Look, I think just for context, I should mention that I've worked in a remote fashion and a distributed fashion on and off for quite a, quite a while. I think I, I first started working from home a few days a week back in around 2003. Now, back then I had... I installed a second phone line. We were still on dial-up. I had. <laughs> I remember those notes. days well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The old, the old little tunes. Is it, is it, is it connected? Um, yep. So Lotus Notes, um, same time chat. It's all pretty rudimentary. Um, but you know, it, it, I think it's quite interesting. You know, hum, us humans, we're pretty adaptable. You don't necessarily need a lot of sophisticated technology. There, there are some hygiene factors. Certainly, better tech helps. But really, you know, it is about having a, a mindset and uh, a desire and I guess a willingness to try and communicate and work together in, in, a, in a different way from when you're co-located. So that's why I'd argue, yeah, the, the, the critical thing around effective distributed teams is in part about the technology, but it's not the, ultimately it's not the most critical factor here that's going to determine whether you're successful or not. 
it really does come down to that mindset. Um, and I think terminology is important here. You know, I make that distinction between remote and distributed. Remote often, um, for me, and, and again, this is from experience of, of working with different organisations in, in different modes of working, is that when you're remote, often it's almost a, a fingers pointing at you. If it doesn't work, if, if the work doesn't get done or the team doesn't gel, it's that remote person, because we're all together, we're fine. Yep. You know, it, and, and quickly dawned on me that really it, it really is a team sport and that it's much better to think about us being distributed as a starting point and get that yep. equity um, rather than assuming you've got a few people that are out there somewhere else in the ether um, and that they're not not really putting their weight or they're not working the, the right way for the rest of the team. Um, so I think that, that's a, a, a really important point to consider. Now that uh, resource you talked about is a is a little planning canvas because we all love those business canvases so I've put it into a form of a one pager. Now, there's a blog post that goes with it and it goes into a bit more detail about how you can use it and some of the thinking behind it. But just in context to your question, I just want to sort of focus on a couple of points because I talk about it in there around this idea of establishing what your expectations or your, your definitions of done might be. And I think, again, talking about the non-technology success factors, you know, if you're leading a distributed team, and actually if you think about it, if you're on the receiving end of being part of a distributed team, you really want to make sure that everyone's got clarity about expectations and expectations is, isn't necessarily, you know, you will answer 100 emails a day. I'm going to check in with you every five minutes to see what you're doing. Um, expectations is about how are we going to work together? And I think definitions have done, which I've borrowed from Agile project methodology, is a really good way of thinking about this because what we're going to say is we're not worried about how you do it so much. Um, it's not about necessarily um, the steps you have to go through to get to that end result. What we're trying to work out is that at the end of the day, when are we happy with we've, we've succeeded? How are we going to measure our, our own team's success? So what's our, what's our definition of done? So we want to get clarity around that. Um, but also as a leader, the most important thing you have to do or focus on is really ensuring your team's success. So in order to get to that definition of done, what do you need to do as a leader to enable that to happen? It could be tech. It could be hardware, it could be office furniture, it could be checking in with someone twice a day on the phone. Wh whatever it is, you, that's your job as a leader to work out how to make your team successful. The other thing I just touched on as well is then rituals. Um, and again, borrowing a little bit from agile project methodology language here. But rituals are all the different things, the different ways of communicating, the stand-ups or the ways you're going to run meetings, the virtual lunches. Um, the way you recognise success, or when you know, when you're done, you know, definition of done, how you reward people, um, all those things. What are you? What are your team's rituals? Both those things I've mentioned. Definitions are done. Rituals. You've got to create that specifically for your for your distributed team. Actually, if I could give you a real world, <laughs> <laughs> if I could give you a bit of a real world example, uh, I work in part of the marketing team here at Lifetiles, and mm -hmm. marketing teams the globe over uh, usually the whipping boy and sometimes you know we get told to go and play with our crayons and all those sorts of things you're, and, you're the original deal but i know yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so we just recently you know we are a distributed marketing team here at live tiles we are in three or four different uh countries and uh recently you know three weeks now we've been working together as a distributed team and i go back to your point about having that uh that mindset that common mindset between the team we have gone you know, with everything that's changed in the world just this last few weeks, we've had to, you know, pivot the company slightly, do try a few new things, and it's all coming through the marketing engine to try and get things moving and, and that sort yeah. of thing. And just because we've had that, that similar mindset, we've all been, you know, working together all remotely, we have, have worked like we've never worked before. It's just been absolutely amazing. And we've gone yeah. from being the, the crown department to uh, just recently, one of my colleagues, Simon, who uh, is very, very rarely gives out praise to the marketing team, he actually said to the our CMO, um, if I've been telling people in other parts of the company, if they want to be working like a great distributed team, have a look at how the marketing team has set themselves up in this past month. Because that yep. common mindset, that common goal, working together and everybody just doing whatever is needed, uh, seems to be a really key thing here. Yeah, well, you, that's it. If you dig into some of the detail around the thinking behind the canvas, you know, talk about this idea that there's, you know, there's situations you get, you find yourself in, like right now with coronavirus, you, where you're being forced to work in a remote fashion. So, okay, so that's not negotiable right now. In the past, that has been negotiable, right? Yes. So the other, yep. thing, the other side of this is you've got to be willing to actually try it and, and work this way. 
Yeah. Um, so that that uh, that mindset that you've talked about is is really critical. And again, it's not just the leader of that distributed team. Um, it is the whole team, and also the people around them that recognise that yeah, we're not we're not just doing it because we're being forced to. We're actually going to embrace this way of working it and make it work really well, and maybe even find some some benefits from from doing from doing it that way as well. I, I don't think I've ever felt as productive as I have in the last three weeks. It's been fantastic actually during some pretty pretty tough times otherwise. So, all right, let's move along. This is not about me. This uh, webinar. This is about Microsoft Teams. So. <laughs> But the Chris Webinar. Tell, tell, yeah. tell me more about how you're working. Hey, this yeah. is my show. This is my show. You're a guest. <laughs> Look, uh, as we know, um, the, the usage of Microsoft Teams has absolutely exploded across the globe. And uh, at Lifetiles, it is the absolute centre of all of our internal communications. And it seems that every single day we're finding new ways to, to use the software in, in different ways. But what, is, what does Microsoft Teams really do to help with that whole idea of facilitating those effective uh, remote teams? Oh, you're on mute, yeah. mate. Oh, look, so I think right. this, is, this is the really um, cool... No, no, I think we just had a bit of network lag there. Um, I, I think this is one of the, the key things about what makes Teams such an interesting solution is that it's, it really supports all modes of collaboration. So you've got video, you've got audio or tele, you know, tele, telephony, you've got chat. Um, if you're going to be working as part of a dis distributed team, it's like a Swiss army knife, which sort of goes to your point about there's a lot, lot packed in. Yeah. But it really is. It's got It's your hub. Right, and you, I mean, you described it in different words, but effectively, it's it's a hub that lets you um, do all the things you might need to, to do. I also like the fact that even if you're not on Teams at a point in time that someone wants to talk to you, it will notify you, say by email, to let you know that you've missed a message. So again, it supports all those different modes of collaboration. You can use it on a laptop, on a device, all those sorts of things. So yeah, it's a, it's a really brilliant bit of kit. Um, I think though, going beyond that, that next step though. If we use it in the right way, it supports the transparency that you need that you need for an effective distributed team. You can you've got access to the information because you, you remember you're no longer sitting next to someone to go, oh Bob, can you, you know, can oh, you yes. show me that file, right? And if and I'll tell you, you're going to get very irritated very quickly if your distributed team members are constantly pinging you on chat saying, hey Chris, where's that presentation, yeah. right? Yeah. It's it, it, it works much more effectively when we are operating in a transparent way and Teams actually provides the tools to do that. And we're, going to, we're actually going to come back to this point I think a bit later, so I won't go in, yep. into it too much. Um, the other thing I like about Teams, and it's getting better and better all the time, I mean we know yeah, Microsoft has got, got a roadmap, sometimes I wish they'd go faster, right? <laughs> but um, I, I think one area, and I'm a consultant, so I work with other people, um, so I've probably got about I don't know, I'd lose count, maybe six different teams that I'm part of with different people, yep. different organisations. That external access is getting better because yes. this is also a reality. Modern workplace is often hybrid teams um, yep. and, and, and team support. It was that, a little bit clunky to working. start with, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, it was. But but that, that's, in, that's gone leap, leaps and bounds ahead. There's still a yep. few little workarounds, but it's much better. The other thing, and this is probably more from a me putting your know, enterprise IT hat on or information security hat on is the other benefit of Teams is everything is captured in your in your Office 365 tenant. So your chats yes. are secure, they're archived, all the files are in SharePoint. So you're not using a tool where that information is just kind of you know disparate and it's floating away into different solutions. Yeah. So that's a really yeah. big, big tick for Teams as well. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Probably moves us nicely onto this next uh, topic, which is tech hygiene. And I mean, as you said, you know, um, Teams really helps in times like these. But I think the thing that slips by for most people with this, this is actually a really, really complex piece of software. Uh, it's not like, you know, you're installing Microsoft Word and all of a sudden you're up and running, writing Word documents. It's it's a lot more than that. There's so many different things to consider. So I just was wondering, like in your experience, what tips have you got for getting your tech or your tech hygiene in order before you, you actually you know, go into a Microsoft Teams installation. Yeah, look, look, actually we've started to touch on this a little bit already. And, and one thing I want to say is you do need to be realistic about Teams. And I'm talking about this from an IT perspective or if you're a, a real yep. Microsoft Office 365 fangirl or fanboy, is that, um, you know, Teams does have some fantastic features, but it has a lot of them, okay? The other thing oh, is it's, it's, it's a product that it is still actually relatively new. It's still evolving. It's still getting better. Um, but you know, there are some use cases where Teams is not always the optimal solution. 
um, or actually, I mean, we're finding a little bit today, a little bit of network lag, and you know, the global ecosystem of digital workplace tools, but particularly the cloud-based tools, they're all under a lot yep. of stress at the moment. Um, we sometimes need to have plan Bs. We need to have alternatives, and not not For force sure. people yep. into using it in a way it just doesn't do, sort of do optimally. Now, um, what what then? I think from that um, is okay. So that's good. Have some support. Have all the resources available. Have your help desk ready to to provide really good advice on those things. Um, but the other thing I think from an IT perspective is. If you haven't got your head around Office 365 groups, that's really important. Now we're kind of in crisis mode at the moment. Let's get teams out to everyone. Let's get them using it. Um, I think that's um, that's that's um, that's really important. Um, but yeah, get your head around Office 365 groups. If you can't do anything with it right now, have a plan for the future. Unfortunately, um, again, product maturity. Microsoft isn't giving you a lot within the Office 365 admin screens to do a lot around really truly leveraging Office 365 groups. So you, you, at the moment you're kind of either looking at learning PowerShell or looking at some of the third party um, solutions that can help you manage those so, groups. So, mate, can I just stop you for one second? Just being that there are mm. quite a few people on this uh, call today might not be as as involved in the tech side of things, maybe more in the comm side of things. Can you just give them a quick yeah. overview of the, of the power of a, of a Microsoft group? Yeah, so again, we could probably spend a couple of webinars talking about this, and <laughs> yeah. there'll be people that know more about it than I do. You've and got 60 the terminology, seconds. I've got 60 seconds, and the terminology <laughs> itself is confusing. Office 365 groups are a sort of a, a new kind of permission and people grouping within Office 365. So if you can imagine, you can select a group of people to be part of this Office 365 group, and through that group, they get access to different resources in terms of like a team, a team. Um, they might have access to a shared um, planner board, um, a mailing list in Office, if you, an Outlook, sorry, if you still want to use email, all those sorts of things. Um, but has wrapped into it also some information management controls, and you can determine what happens to the information that you're sharing. You can determine whether people can invite external users into a team. Um, and when you think about deploying teams at scale, Office 365 Groups is the way that you manage all that information and access and security and lifecycle at scale. So if you don't do anything about it, Microsoft is just going to create things for you, and that's fine. But we, you, you do risk having a bit of a wild west later down the track. And that, that <laughs> might, now that might be okay. You might not yeah. be too bothered because the information is still within your Office 365 tenant. It doesn't it doesn't affect that, but it does affect your ability to manage those teams and manage that yeah. information effectively over time. No yeah. Hopefully that yep. helped everybody uh, to understand. Great stuff, mate. Thanks. Yeah. Just, so, basically, just just tap on the T on the shoulder and go. Have you got a plan for Office 365 groups? <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. All right. Now, probably what uh, people are most interested in today is how we can help. Uh, I've, I've said in the previous webinars that in times of crisis, we all need to draw upon the resources that are, that are available to us just just to get by. Um, you aren't alone. Um, you know, lifetimes is hurting with all of this mm -hmm. as well, and we have decided. You know. We're, whenever we can offer help to support the community and our customers, you know, we're going to do it. So hot off the press, uh, last week we've implemented a, a few new help services around Teams, which I'll, I'll now sort of tell you about. First up on the screen there, let me introduce you to Molly. She is absolutely fantastic. She's our customer success champion. And her and I have been working on a number of short and sharp videos to help everyone with some really simple but also effective uh, tips and tricks in and around Microsoft Teams. There's about 15 videos out now. Uh, you'll absolutely love her. She is just such a breath of fresh air uh, in comparison to who you might normally see on um, these types of videos, uh, these help videos, which is usually someone, you know, maybe a white guy with glasses and a headset on. She is just like the, the opposite of that and she's absolutely fantastic. So as I said, 15 uh, videos up on our website uh, and more to come. Next, uh, you know, right before Corona hit us, we created this fantastic card game to assist us with implementing uh, Microsoft Teams. Um, obviously, we can't play it in person now for obvious reasons. Um, but what we did, we took those insights when we when we created that game, and we've turned it into a what you see on the screen there, which is a, which is an online version of the game. Um, it's really really useful, even as an online version. Um, and we on the on the website, we talk you through how we can help you facilitate it with with your teams to make sure that you get the absolute most out of your Microsoft Teams installation. So um, I've been involved with with quite a few of these uh, in person. 
And the, I was saying to James before, the, the insights and the conversations that you have around the table with people are absolutely fantastic. And when we throw in, um, you know, silly events to sort of consider while you're building out this, this model, uh, it is absolutely fantastic to see how people are changing their thinking and you know bringing in new apps or bringing in new tabs and those sorts of things to really build out a really solid base for your Microsoft Teams. It's really, really good. And um, look, lastly, if you're at that stage when you are ready to go with implementing Teams, we've, we've got a Microsoft Teams Accelerator program service that uh, really rapidly helps you go from this planning stage here with, with the Teams game into, into implementation. So look, if you wanna know more about how we can help with Teams adoption, uh, Lifetiles.myc, you'll see the solutions tab um, on our website and you'll be able to um, check out more information about, about these uh, services that I've shown you here. Steve, I think it's really, good, it's really good, Chris, because I, I think um, co-designing your teams is, is a really important process. So any tools like yes. that are great for, for driving that. Yeah, yeah. Like we had a great session with, um, we had half a dozen key customers come down and we, we played this and um, just the reaction from people saying, oh, wow, I never really thought what might happen if, uh, you know, something silly like rats ate through your Cat5 cable or silly, <laughs> but those kinds of real life situations, I mean, who would have thought we'd have a pandemic? You know, yeah. those sorts of situations that we, we sort of throw into the mix when you're planning out these teams, it really, really helps, um, you know, consider those different situations and really brings the team together and it sort of makes it, you're building something together, um, which, yeah. which is great. So. I've, I've used the online version that we've got, which has been created in our uh, page designer software, and it still encapsulates all of those great insights and, and the, the methodology behind pulling this together, and uh, it still works really, really well. So anybody that's interested, jump onto lifetiles.myc and we can uh, help you out there. Now, let's get into this nitty gritty. This is what mm. I've got here, James. You know, we, yep. we know, as we said before, Teams is great for chatting, video calls, phone calls, and file sharing, but I know you've got some thoughts on how we can leverage it further, and I just, I'm really keen to hear what you've got to say here, mate. Yeah, yeah. So look, I mean, uh, uh, you know, people tend to, I think, come from those directions you've mentioned. They either come from they're using it as a meetings tool, a, a, a conferencing tool, or maybe they've just used it purely as a chat-based solution. Um, yeah. And then on, on first glance, like, oh, wow, if you've been using it for chat, oh, I can use it for meetings. Awesome. Or if you've just been using it for video conferencing, say, oh, there's a, there's some chat functionality. But if you can imagine a bit of a Venn diagram, you've got you've got the the, the meetings. I'm actually going to say the other the other circle is 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 group chat rather than yes. individual chat. But the yep. other really important one is about is really about getting work done, and it's that sweet spot right in the middle where we we have meetings, group communication, and getting work done that really makes Teams stand out as a, as a solution. Actually, not just for distributed Teams, but certainly right now, it, it really is good for that. But as, a, as an individual worker, you've really got that fantastic hub where you can actually do things, you can take action. Um, so I think that's a really important sort of mental concept to think about. Yeah. Group chat is actually almost the ramping point, I think. Because you know, how many meetings do we go to where you know actually nothing really happens? Um, in this sort of point in time, some of the face-to-face -face interaction via video is actually playing a different role. We're actually socialising, whereas yes. in the workplace, when we're physically located together, we do a lot of socialising outside, and then occasionally we have these meetings where we try and stay awake and stay focused. But you know, most decisions get made you know, <laughs> outside of these places. Um, so I mean, there's a whole psychology you know, and research around meeting effectiveness, but but when we're looking at distributed teams and we're looking at Microsoft Teams, yeah, your, your group chat is your on-ramp for um, for starting to get to that point where you can do more yeah. with Teams. Yeah. yeah. If we then look at this idea of getting work done, well, this is again um, Teams' is superpower. It is its ability to actually then integrate other tools, information, knowledge, and people into this place, this hub where you're, you're trying to do work. Now, there are a couple of quite a few different avenues for doing this. The first one is bots. Um, and it's interesting, you know, we, we, we tried portals. You know, years ago, intranets have tried yeah. the portal approach and it just it just didn't work. It was hard for people to personalize them. If you tried to guess what people needed, um, you often got it wrong because you, you never quite understood the full scope of all the tools people needed, all these different bits and pieces. But now we've got um, bots as a, almost a, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really low friction way of integrating teams with other solutions because you as the user, don't need to learn that other system necessarily. You just need to know what you want to do with it. And the bot yep. can be built to either bring information to you, it can be done in a method where you ask it for information or it can react to things going on 
and sort of proactively offer to do things, whatever it might be, whatever makes sense for that for that that scenario. And then it can also take you out to that system if it, if you get beyond what the bot can support. Um, the other really neat thing though that I do really like about Teams is the tabs. So you can actually bring things in to where you are. So again, you're yes. not going to go there. You bring them to you. Yeah. Um, now, your OneNote you about, or, or your Excel or that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Right. There's there's a little wiki in there. You can pull in. I mean, I think one of the most popular things that people do is bring in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, yeah. So there's all all sorts of things you can do. If you think about the next level up, then is is actually apps that that yeah. then interact with information. Um, you know, the most sim simple example of an app is is something like Polly which is a polling tool. Oh, I was going to mention Polly. I love yeah. Polly. Well, I love and yeah. hate Polly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you can see how if you've used Polly, um, uh, and, for, and obviously for those that haven't, it, it actually interacts with you in multiple ways. It has a tab, yes. it gets into chat, it has a bot to advise you if, you, if you've um, scheduled a, a poll to happen. And you yep. can see how you, you've actually got Teams. Actually, I should say on the side, I actually don't think of Teams as an app. Teams is a is a kind of a, a user interface that taps into all these different features and functionality of Office 365 and through yes. APIs integrates with other tools. Um, now that's getting a bit kind of meta, but really <laughs> Polly is a, is a little example of how that all starts to come together. If you think about applying that to a natural business process, you can see how you can potentially use Teams to build out a really sophisticated integration, but it can be personalized to the user. You, you can decide the tab, you can decide how you interact with the bot, so we're getting to that kind of uh, actually trying to remove friction in how we integrate with systems through apps, through sure. um, through um, tabs and through bots. That final piece is though, is we've also got the opportunity to be citizen developers by using low code automation tools. Flow is Microsoft's option, but there are other yes. low code tools out there. So remember we started off saying it's a Swiss army knife? You know, <laughs> actually that, 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 that Swiss army knife is actually pretty robust. It's yeah. The, the, the knife is not yeah. as flimsy as you might think. That corkscrew tool, yeah. you found a use for it. Um, and that's where, where we really want to get to, is not just using it for meetings. Because to be honest, mate, there are other tools that do meetings really well as well. Yeah, that's sure. We yeah. Do, right? We're using one there's now, yeah. There's, uh, uh, yeah, and certainly picking the right tool for the purpose. Yep. There's lots of ways of doing chat. Um, Microsoft experimented with that sort of email version where it was like chat. Do you know what I mean? We can actually yes. just use email if you just want to yeah. talk remotely. What makes the difference is that final part of the diagram is getting work done. That's what, what makes Teams exciting for me personally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Oh, great insights, mate. Great insights. Speaking of insights, do you see what I did there? Mm -hmm. Let's uh, yeah. talk about the Swoop Report now. Um, look, if you don't know what the Swoop Report is, I'll, I'll read this bit here for you. So Swoop have benchmarked the interactions of 47,000 plus people in 5,500 teams and more than 1 million channel interactions. They've spread that across 15 organisations from a variety of industry sectors and geographies and they did this uh, review over a 12-week period. So it's, it was a pretty comprehensive look at how Microsoft Teams is now used by businesses. And they wrapped it up all into this uh, pretty little report here you can see on the right hand side of the screen now this was james suggestion to sort of uh, go through this report but um i'm not a real attention to detail guy so i've asked james to uh provide us with his top three takeaways from the report the bit of the executive executive summary if you like james look, yeah, well, what do you look, got look, yeah well look it is a long report i know that the, the kai and laureates work really well I've worked with them in the past in, in different different um roles um, so there's a lot in there. But there's three things that really stand out for me. So the, 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 now this first one, I think, could be sound quite controversial, but it's actually a, a good thing. And actually, right now, because of the, 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 the sort of crisis we're under, we're kind of doing it in a way. And when I say IT needs to get out of the way, what we're really meaning is that um, don't let IT determine how business users want to use Teams. Okay, yes. the users Great. know or should be given the opportunity to explore that and discover how they want to use it together. Um, don't insist on training as being a gatekeeper to getting access to Teams. Now, again, I think luckily at this time, Teams is just getting deployed out to people sort of rapidly. So we've kind of actually, there's an upside to the situation we're in. We've kind of, we've, we've kind of seen that happen. However, the one last danger, and often this is where IT can, can not be the problem, but um, indirectly um, creates problems, is that in, in either the rush to get it out at the moment or in the past as we were planning to deploy Teams, we basically look at all the existing structures. We look at mailing lists. We look at the org chart, and we just replicate it in Teams. And again, that's the wrong. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the wrong way of doing it. Um, this comes actually back to the Office 365 groups because they are a solution yes. to allowing yep. you to scale it in a way that's directed by the business needs and the user needs rather than you taking that, that pattern of what the org chart is and thinking that's how it should be. Yeah. And if I, you know, if I can give you an insight from the Teams game that we've been playing, that is usually the first thing that they come up with. You know, what teams do we need to make? Oh, well, I need the, the global distribution list to be recreated or the marketing or, or whatever that case may be. That Their minds are trained just to sort of go and immediately replicate that. We're like, now, hold on. How do you operate? Like, you know, have you got project-based uh, teams that you want to create or, or whatever? And, um, yeah, so I love, I love that you made that point there, mate. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, 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 I mean, the great thing is a lot of, and a couple of the other points we'll go through, some of these things are ideas that people like me in the industry have said, this is the, it, how it should be. Swoop have actually now got given us some data. So I'm not making this stuff up anymore. Um, <laughs> it's not just based on my experiences. We've actually got some, some, some actual data that tells us that actually this is, this is kind of, um, kind of true. So if you, if you want to jump onto the next point then, I think this is really interesting. Teams is no longer a brand new product. It's been around for a few years. We've talked about the roadmap and it's got some good points. It's got some limitations. But in terms of how we're using it, the data tells us that it's still early days. Um, I, I'm just going to reference the stat. Yeah, so 70% to 95% of messages, chat messages in Teams are still private chat messages. So oh, wow. when I talked earlier, yeah. And yeah. now that means actually in a way we're seeing a shift from email to Teams, but it's almost a substitute. And again, that's, yeah. that's not a bad thing. But as I said, mentioned earlier, group chat is the on-ramp to getting work done um, rather than having private chat because private chat isn't transparent. Um, but it does mean that if you're going to transition from private chat to group chat, you've got to learn the, little, the etiquette of how you um, share information, how you bring it to the yeah. attention of specific people when you need it, rather than defaulting to, to, to private chat. Yeah. The, um, the, and one of the issues there is I think that Swoop talk about this concept of high performing teams in teams is it's probably again in this moment where we're rushing to use teams, you might want to think about what's your, what's your roadmap for going from just dealing with the crisis to actually creating high-performing distributed sure. teams in, in, in yeah. teams. Um, yeah. <laughs> last point then, <laughs> um, it, yeah, we sort of summarise this as digital transformation. Um, now again, as for context, I've known the Swoop team for a long time. We come from, from very similar backgrounds around knowledge management and thinking about organisations of networks, how information flow outside the org chart. And certainly Swoop, when they look at their data and they look at how people are using it, they think that Teams really offers a, a, a fantastic opportunity to be a core platform for us to move from very hierarchical command and control models to distributed yep. um, network operating models for organisations. Yep. If we want to put away all the kind of the, the consulting talk of hierarchy <laughs> versus network for a moment, one thing I just say to people, when you think about it, the internet actually is a network. Um, Networks are really um, resilient in times of disruption. So if there's ever an argument for you to transition from command and control to a, a network style organisation, um, then then this is probably the, the time to be thinking about that in terms of building resilience inside organisations. And that comes from busting silos, being transparent with information and all those other things we've been talking about. So it, look, download the report. I think it's about 90 plus pages. Yeah. We've all got time to do some reading. It's, it's worth getting into. I've, I've got to page three, the uh, the summary there. <laughs> I'll see how I go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, look, James, this uh, this Microsoft Teams thing feels a bit like a runaway train to me right now. So I think we've got two choices. We either hop on and enjoy the ride or we, or we get out of its way. But, you know, I, I work for a company that was built around the idea of internets and digital workplaces. Should we at Lifetiles be a little bit nervous that this is going to push us out of the market or replace us? Or is there a, a plan B where we can coexist or maybe where we augment into teams? I've, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts around that? Look, Chris, I'm glad you're sitting down. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, look, we've been talking about Swoop Analytics and their findings. And, and again, one of the things that they, um, the data they have supports a, a view that's been building in the industry. I think even, um, if we weren't sitting here today talking about this because of coronavirus, um, we're aware that there was something happening with, with intranets. Um, and, I, and I think one of the things is that that traditional intranet idea of the homepage being a start page for an organisation is really being eroded. Um, we've, as I said, we've tried portals, um, we've tried all different sorts of things to try and make those homepages 
engaging and that takes you so far. But for me, ultimately, it's about how work gets done or work getting done. And, you know, internet homepages have often ended up just being um, destinations. But ironically, if you've got, if you want sort of some um, cause to be confident about the role of intranets, one thing I'd say, those emails should also be feeling quite threatened as well when you look at how yeah. people are using Teams. Yep. Um, so you it's know, not the just whole thing internet. once upon a time you used to justify yourself by how many unread emails you had when you were on holidays or overnight or whatever that and I've, I've still got friends that work in offices that still operate like that oh so busy today. i had 150 emails like i get about 10 or 12 these days on a daily basis because my communication is yeah. really shifted outside of that that's right that's right that's right so um so the other thing i want you to reflect on though as well and again in the context of live tiles I think the shift to tools like Teams and, and so that portals kind of didn't work. The idea of this work hub in Teams is not just more attractive, but it's a it's a more integrated approach and, and potentially less friction and ironically more personalised to the user because we have a bit it's a bit like it's actually a bit like your inbox. Why inbox is an email that are so so popular is that you have some control over that. And you've got a little bit more of that kind of control in how you want to use Teams and use it together. But when you also look at solutions like Wisdom's Power Panel, I actually see that part of a, the same spectrum of, of how the the, the primary um, start page being the internet homepage, again, is being eroded. Because what the Wisdom Power Panel does, and I, I might let you explain in a moment to others maybe yeah. what that is, but you know, basically it put, for me it puts like a supercharged global navigation yeah. across your, your device. You can get to the actual things that help you do stuff from wherever you are. And I think that's the common theme here is that it's not about creating destination sites like an internet homepage. It's about creating a, um, um, a tools that bring you the information and so the people, the knowledge that you need to you when you need to use it. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to just make brief, maybe let you briefly explain. Well, how I, I, while I just get, to, so I pulled my yeah. teams down, I'm just firing things up right now so people can see this. Uh, there was a question, um, uh, I'm not sure who it came from. Does the chat feature in Teams work like the other messaging apps, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, where you don't need to have the app open to receive the messages, or do you need to have the Teams app open like Skype? Uh, I think my Teams app is pretty much always open, so I probably haven't really noticed. I look, look, very briefly, funny story. Early years ago, I was trying to encourage the use of um, instant messaging in an organisation, and a manager told me he booted up the instant messaging app, didn't see anyone he wanted to talk to, so he shut it down and he never put it up again. Um, so yeah, I mentioned this earlier. So this is the, the, the one of the cool features about Teams is you don't have to be logged in. It will notify you via email um, if there is something you've missed, or if you know if you have it installed on your phone, it doesn't have to be up and running. It can it, you can use notifications on your phone. Yeah. But yeah, you don't have to be logged in. So Actually, it's not like the consumer Skype. You um no. yeah you don't need to be logged in so that's yeah, that's actually, a really useful thing. I I do lie I've been getting lots of uh, late evening pings on my phone saying that the messenger uh, in Teams has, has gone off so yeah for sure. Yeah yeah. Um, 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 actually while you're sort of maybe just yep. doing some things yeah, right. the other thing I'll just throw in there though why I still think there's a role for intranets though is that we still need information management tools we still need knowledge management tools but I think again probably relevant to the the current situation is that in organisations I've worked with in recent years, they've also seen the value in creating um, places that you can go to to, uh, to access uh, sort of a, a trusted source of news, so an archive of news. And one of the things they've raised is social media is great. When you bring social media into an organisation, that's great. But there's also a risk of internal fake news being generated. So, yeah. th so there's, there's a role for having a place where you can go to and go, what is the policy? What is the procedure? What is the news? And that that is accessible there. So I said I think it's just a changing role, but it's a much better, actually a much better digital workplace because of it. It just means that the, the homepage of your internet is no longer the, the the thing that we need to be worried about. Yeah, yeah, uh, good stuff. Now while we've been uh, doing that, I've just pulled up my Teams. Hopefully this will work. You'll be able to see this on the screen. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So this is this is my Teams here. And here is the Power Panel. We've got it up in here as an app. And then Power Panel basically brings all the other elements of what we would classically have via our digital workplace or intranet 
in two teams. So uh, mm. I think the best you've got like your people directory here. Uh, you've got Yammer comes through. I, I better not click on any of this stuff because this is all live. <laughs> um, your travel requests. We've got our uh, our automated uh, bot that helps us update um, the employee directory. It used to be called Hyperfish. Now employee directory assistant. I think we call that. Uh, but this mm. this one here is something that we've uh, pulled together just to keep everybody in in the loop around uh, the COVID nineteen updates. And this is all surface through Power Panel um, and uh, in, into Teams. So there yeah. you go. That's yeah. a, and that, that's be, that, of... and that'll be drawing from SharePoint, right? That that COVID nineteen page. We'll Correct. Try. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yep. hopefully that now brings you back onto my PowerPoint slide. Everybody can see that. I hope. Yeah. So look, um, you know, if I can wrap up on the um, what happens to the internet, I, I think it's about sure. shifting internets away from being um, seen as the sort of primary destination. You're going to use using tools in context, but you still want to have a place where you can um, uh, have a, you know, as I said that that trusted source of information and knowledge that you can go back to. And you know, Teams doesn't manage content ultimately, no, no, so you're, sure. you're going to need a pl to have a place for content. But it, it, it's really about a design choice. You know, you can make your internet um, useful. Um, and let's forget about making intranets pretty brochures, which is kind of where we almost started with intranets, unfortunately. They've yep. a bit of a tug of war, but sorry, yeah. guys, yeah, we don't need brochureware anymore. No, no. Uh, and look, I've got to say that uh, that, that power panel that we've been using recently has, has really been a, a real change in the way I've been doing things. I've sort of been going to different places to get the information now. So, uh, yeah, it's a strange world we're living in. Everything's changing every day, but uh, we, we do our best. But uh, I've, I've certainly enjoyed using, uh, changing the way that I operate. So, um, so the boss telling me is available. That, that was a Teams uh, notification there that uh, I've got I've got one of the bosses turned on to say that when he's available, pings me up with that message there, and I know that I can get get onto him straight away. So uh, <laughs> there you go. All right. We're definitely live, uh, aren't we, Chris? <laughs> oh, we are totally live. That's what I love about these on a on a Thursday morning <laughs> while I've got my children downstairs homeschooling. That's fantastic. <laughs> the new world. Look, uh, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of different solutions we can talk about on lifetiles.myc. Uh, all the details of that cool stuff I mentioned over there before. Uh, please jump on and have a look. Uh, we've also left you the link to, to James's blog there. Lots of great stuff as well. And of course, um, we'll send out links to all this in, in the follow-up emails uh, for you. And if you want to re-watch the, uh, the webinar and see us, the two of us chat again, uh, these will also be resurfacing via our YouTube page as well. So um, might uh, throw it out to some questions now if anybody's had enough coffee and uh, got themselves up and running this morning, ready to ask a question. But, uh, questions haven't been free flowing, except for maybe on the podcast episode uh, last week. People may be a little bit too shy. Someone did tell me that they needed a few more cups of coffee to, to get into the swing of things, so I completely understand that. Doesn't look like there's anything uh, coming forward, but look, I guess the offer is, is there, that you've got our email addresses there on the screen for James and myself. Um, and, uh, you know, we're more than happy to uh, answer questions via email, so reach out to us and uh, just see where maybe we can help out, because really that's what this is all about right now. This is uh, unprecedented times and we all need to help each other, so that's uh, it's kind of why we've set this uh, whole webinar series up for, for everybody. Speaking of, great segue, next week we'll have another one of these, and we're going to take a look at uh, Microsoft Teams in the education space. now. I hadn't put up there who my guest was going to be because we're still finalising that. But I, uh, I can say that uh, my guest next week is coming to us from Oxford University. Uh, so we've got a heavy hitter. I will, uh, I'll confirm the name in the days to come. But uh, it's going to be great because uh, I, I don't know about yourselves. If you've got children at home, my daughter is downstairs on Microsoft Teams as we speak, having her uh, 9 a.m or well, thereabouts uh, daily meeting with the entire class in a team and they, they've they very quickly got teams up and running. Uh, it is absolutely horrible what, the way the teacher has set it up. It uh, She needs to go through a few of the Molly videos and learn a few things and talk, and maybe the Teams game and talk about how to set things up because they've basically got one big general chat under the classroom and it is uh, is an absolute mess. So uh, we're going to talk a bit uh, about that sort of stuff next week uh, with my guest from Oxford. So. Hopefully you can join me then, uh, but for now, uh, we'll wrap things up. I just want to say thanks, James, for uh, being part of this today, mate. Uh, really appreciate it. I know you've also got uh, some working from home challenges at the moment, so yeah. I appreciate you taking the time from your from your lounge room there. You can probably straighten the curtains up next time, mate. It'll be all right behind you. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, need, I, need, I need a nice background, don't I? Um, <laughs> anyway, look, Chris, 
Chris, great chatting with you. Um, and um, yeah, certainly if people got questions later, uh, let me know. Absolutely. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, mate. Great chat, great insights. Thank you for sharing with us and thank you to everybody uh, for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you next week, uh, 8.30 Thursday uh, in uh, Australia. So thanks very much. Talk to you later. Cheers.